Okay, good afternoon, everyone. It's already 7 p.m., so maybe it's time to start. I don't know. What about you? How are you feeling? How are you today? Ready? Buenas tardes. Hola. Hello to everyone. So the content of this webinar will be held in English, not in Spanish, as some of you are not Spanish native speakers, but from other countries, from other member states. And also because we got several questions to Yasemos Europeos from different places, citizen backgrounds, asking us about this new competition, the competition on agriculture profile. So that's why we decided to organize this new session, this webinar, webinar to share with you some of our knowledge or perspective about it and also the good practices that we have learned uh, during this time on how to tackle the talent and how to pass to the next phase, to the assessment center, right? Before I continue, I would like to remind you, I'm recording the, the session, so it means that uh, you are on the camera somehow. Don't worry about it. You can turn off your camera, so no need to appear there. And we'll upload this session later on, probably in our YouTube channel, but still, uh, we will see. But, uh, so... Let's start. Let's start about this new competition that happened one week ago and it will be closed in a couple of weeks ahead. So it's still pretty enough time to fulfill the, the application and to put there all our best knowledge and our best experience to get one of these uh, desired spots, right? So let's move. Also, remind you, I'll put it on the chat, but I remind you again, all the questions will be solved, but at the end of the session. So please write it down on the chat and we'll solve it. If I'm lucky, most of them will be solved during the presentation. But we will see. Let's go for it. So, sorry. Okay, I propose you one thing today. Let's say it's a unicorn. Why a unicorn, right? Why, uh, why that? Unicorn is a fantasy animal. It's something that we know or something that we don't know. Well, yes, but it's like the talent screener. It's like chasing unicorns. Maybe we are chasing a fantasy or maybe it's something real. Let's find out. Let's discover today what about it's behind this unicorn. It's only a shape or oh, we can find a... Uh, the great solution of a candidature of, of application, sorry, to, to this competition. So let's move. For that, to chase that unicorn, I propose you four different steps. Why does it matter? Why do they care about the talent screener, about my application? Is it relevant? What to answer? Let's see some tips about your CV. Not only the talent screener, but your CV matters too. What to answer in the part of the talent screener? Most of you came for this, but now that we are all together and we are sitting in such a good moment, why not to talk about all the elements, not only the talent, but, that's it, but that will be the key part of today. And in general, how to answer some general uh, tips that maybe are logical, maybe are obvious, but our experience tells us that they are not always respected by the candidates. Sometimes we need a kind reminder of how to answer the, in your application to get it done. And it's, be, it's always better remember to go hear it twice than none. And it's always better to check twice than none. So always a fairly safe approach to get through it. Hope this is clear. So let's move on. Okay, maybe you have read this already. If you haven't, well, you should, because these are the tasks that you're expected to perform as an officer in the, uh, through the agriculture profile. As you can see, it's a work completely related to the DG Agri, it's the uh, Direction General in charge of the uh, topics related to agriculture, fisheries and others. So, well, develop uh, legislation, implement and manage existing legislation, manage programs, perform economic analysis, negotiate, contribute to the evolution of activities, or represent the DG Agri in commission working groups, EU committees, or on some other places. Why do I write it here? Because this is relevant. You see, EPSO, 
and the institution, they are not inventing anything. They are not creating something from nothing or out of the blue. It's nothing that you will woke up one morning and say, okay, I'm an EPSO representative. I decided that today I will define the task of an officer in the DG Agri like this. No, no, it doesn't work like that. I mean, this is a pure synthesis of what you are expected to do once you have passed the competition and you join the institutions. And this is relevant, please. So retain these words, retain these ideas, because it will guide you through the application process. It will help you a lot. Now we are going through a process that we need to think about. We need to put our mind inside. Okay, so let's continue. And remember, there are 55 spots, so there's plenty for all. First thing that we should be very aware, we should know for sure, is that you take seriously your application. So what does it mean? Please don't leave it for the last day. Please take your time. Please don't do it while you are listening to a hard rock uh, concert or something like that. Concentrate, focus, read it carefully, answer even more carefully, check twice. And I will repeat myself many, many times about this, but please do it, take it seriously. Otherwise, some of the factors cannot be fulfilled because at the end, you are as good as your explanation is. It's not a question, okay, you got just barely the experience needed for to uh, apply to the position. Let's say you got three, four years of uh, working experience in the area of expertise. You got your degree in agricultural science, good. So, and you explain yourself greatly. You, you detail all the elements in your degree, in your working experience, you take your time. You will get far better results in the talent and when assessing your CV, that a professional who has been working in the agricultural sector for 20 years, perhaps 25, but at the end consider that everything is granted and just because he has been working 25 years, the people from EPSO should know already they should already consider it positively and allow him to pass to the assessment. Not at all. I mean, at the end, it's only whatever you put on your paper, let's say in your application, what matters. So don't get confused. Um, perhaps someone has the micro open, so I will kindly just to close it for the moment and we'll open the micro later to answer all the questions. So, so is it, I was saying the combination of taking seriously your application and doing a good explanation of your CV and your expertise in the domain of this competition it will get you into the assessment center. Otherwise, you won't be. It doesn't matter how, how many years of experience you got, if you don't explain them correctly, how do they know? How can they be sure that you are the, the right person for the position? It's up to you to explain it correctly. So why does it matter? Because also what is gonna happen is that most of the times candidates get out of the competition because they commit the most typical mistakes. It's not a question about lack of merit, the lack of experience or expertise, no. It's a simple question of lack of effort or committing these mistakes. Like for instance, thinking that there are too many candidates. The, okay, it could be 500, 600 with a no chat, but still, are they better than me? Not necessarily. Will all they perform better than me when fulfilling the application? Well, I don't think so, because there are too many candidates who don't take seriously the application process. Second, thinking that it's too complicated. Okay, no, come on, I have to read a lot. I have to write a lot. Well, that's too complicated. I leave it. Come on, guys, it's not so complicated. Do you want this position? Do you want to work as an officer? Uh, 86 in the institutions? Well, you, I think the position and the competition deserves a few hours to fulfill the, uh, the application, to read carefully. I mean, there are not so many pages, the, the notice of competition. There are not so many pages inside of your application form. So come on, it can be done. It's not complicated. It's not uh, rocket science. So um, third, having fear of having a bad CV, not enough experience. I said before, it's, it's how you explain it, it's how you sell it more than the fact of the years or more than the fact itself of your CV. 
So if you do it uh, correctly, you have a chance. You have a very good chance. But if you don't spend time, you don't pay attention, of course, your chances are very, very low. Oh, procrastination. That's my favorite. Because I will always say, okay, no, well, I started yesterday. No, no, well, no, I, I will begin today. No, no, I'm too tired. Tomorrow, tomorrow, okay, tomorrow. Uh, yeah, no, 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 tomorrow after tomorrow. No, tomorrow after tomorrow after tomorrow. No, maybe next week. Yeah, uh, but no, just week for sure. On Monday, I will be there. It's Wednesday next week. No, 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 Friday, Friday. No, no, on Saturday, on Saturday. No, on Sunday. And times go, moves on, moves on. And then it's the deadline next day. And you say, oh, crap, I didn't do it. I have to do it. Last night, just, just uh, write and type a lot. You don't pay attention to the mistakes. You, you don't get the best of your explanations. That's why procrastination probably is the worst enemy here. The other three are very common mistakes and procrastination is another common mistake, but also is your enemy. Don't leave it for tomorrow. Do it today. Also because you will need time. You will need several days, not because of the many hours you need to invest, but because it's good to do, uh, do step by step. One question at a time. Think about it, reflect, sleep on it, but don't try to do it all in one day. Usually it doesn't work. So... Let's move from the mistake to the good practices. Let's see how, what would they need uh, here. So, but before that, let's do a small analysis to remind you why it matters. What is relevant to invest time in fulfilling the talent screener and your CV when you apply. This is an example of a competition that just finishes uh, one, uh, sorry, one month ago. In there, we got uh, many candidates who pass that we help them to, uh, to pass the competition. So we hope to see you in the assessment and help you to that part too. In the meantime, let's focus on what uh, this is going today. So in that competition, administrators in competition law, in the profile of uh, competition law, there were 820 candidates initially. From there, after the review of the CV, they pass to the uh, talent screener only half of them. It means that half of them got their full merits, or at least they explained themselves correctly to prove that they got the full merit of experience, six years, plus the degree needed to this competition. So that's relevant. I think only half of the candidates were gone only because of the CV. That's it, nothing else. Then from the talent, one third moved to, to the assessment. So from 437, we got 176 candidates who went into the assessment. But to get into the assessment, you needed 26 points over 64. It doesn't mean, as you see, in theory, a big uh, curriculum, a uh, great expert in this area should get 64 points. That's what you could expect, right? But you're telling me that the last person who passed to the assessment got only 26. So it means that that person only got, got few areas where it was an expert or where this person had some expertise or managed to explain him or herself good enough to get the points in the different questions and to get it through. So I just see you don't need to be a perfect candidate in the sense of having 30 years of working experience in the area, in the field of expertise. No, you don't need to be um, the uh, best knowledge person on this area. No, you need to explain yourself. You need to do it clearly. You see? So, so far from 820 to 176, they were nearly 700 candidates went away 650 to be more precise, went away because they didn't fulfill the criteria or they just have a low mark talent screener. And in most of the cases, because we saw it, we, we knew about some candidates, they have the CV, they have the experience, but they didn't work enough in the talent screener. That's why it's relevant. That, that's why it matters to dedicate time to fulfill the application. I think I have said, I said it before, and I will say it later, as I say it to the, now. Please do it. So let's continue. Let's see another competition. Well, because maybe it was by chance that there was in competition law that happened this. So what happened in the Food Safety Policy and Legislation, 86? Just like this one that we are dealing now today. It, this one it was from 2018. 
so already over, but we got exactly the same thing. During the re uh, revision of your CV, just checking if you got enough working experience or the title to, to get through, only half, even a little bit less than half, went to the assessment center, sorry, to the talent screener. So you see, it's important how you fulfill your CV also. And then from the, the talent, it went through to, uh, to the assessment, o only those who got 48 points over 78. In this case, the punctuations were a bit higher, but still means one of four got, uh, got it through. So again, you need to get the best of your talent. You need to get the best of your results and your capacities put in your application. You can get that through a good explanation, not because of a miracle. As I say, are we chasing unicorns? I said at the beginning, perhaps, maybe we can find the magical solution to our problems and to fulfill the talent screener. So please put it in perspective. Uh, to this assessment, they will get at least three, three times successful candy, uh, the number of successful candidates. So, so it means more or less in this competition, 165. But before that, you need to pass the candidature, the application, sorry, and the CV and the talent screener. And it's the same process for all. It doesn't mean that uh, if you are, uh, you are the Minister of Agriculture of one country, you won't get a preference treatment. You will be a VAP. Um, for those who study only engineer, agriculture engineer, they will get a regular treatment. No, all of you, you will get exactly the same treatment in this competition. Oh, I mean, the process is anonymous and they don't know that they are assessing you. They just see your application. So don't forget it. Focusing now on the CV part. Remember to put as many inputs as possible regarding they are related to the field or area of this competition. Detail, it matters. It's not enough to say, okay, I work as a agriculture engineer in a company for four years. Okay, good, but what did you do? It's not only the, the name of the position, it's what you did. And what you did should be aligned with the things, the, uh, with the task that we saw right at the beginning. You remember the task uh, that will be in principle expected for a agriculture officer once you have passed the competition and you join the institutions? Well, you're supposed to have performed something equivalent in the past in your working experience. Those are the things that you are supposed to reflect when fulfilling your CV, okay? Again, check twice that you have the time, the, the year, that you have allocated correctly the, the, the time frame. Because sometimes a very stupid mistake, like, okay, I was working as an agricultural engineer from 2010 to 2019. Wonderful. More than enough. But imagine you just when typing, instead of putting 2010, you put just 2017. 2017, 2019, oh, sorry, it's not enough. It's not three years. You don't have enough experience. But come on, I described all my all, all what I did. I did everything. I got the title. Yes, but we asked for three years. And in your application, you put less than three years. Sorry, guy. Oh, sorry, girl. It's not, it's not possible for us to, to accept you. Because whatever is writing on your application, it's good for us. So careful with that. Could this happen? Could this stupid, very stupid mistake happen? Yes, it can. We have seen it. I mean, it's not something that we are inventing. It's not something that we are saying, okay, it's your imagination. It, can, it couldn't be. Oh, yes, it can be. So check it twice. And also remember that your application could be seen by the selection board during the process in any time. But usually what matters is the moment of the assessing your CV and then the part, the part of the talent when they are assessing the talent. Uh, also, also important, the languages, English or French, please be careful because sometimes we have tendency, okay, I got all the description of my job position in, let's say, in Spanish. I got my description in Spanish, so I put it all in Spanish in my application. But I say that the application, I'm fulfilling it in English and the talent, I'm fulfilling it in English too. 
uh, what the hell are you doing with a full text in Spanish? It doesn't make sense. And also it will be detected and you will be eliminated. You will, you will be forced to abandon the competition if you don't fulfill this criteria. Again, very stupid criteria. Come on, it cannot be. Of course, I will have everything in English or in French in the language required. Yeah, yeah but though, we have seen that mistake as well. It happens. We are human beings. We make mistakes. That that's why we're insisting. Check your application twice or even three times. Or even if you're lucky enough, get someone to check for you. So you can be sure that the language is correct and you are not mixing the wrong language. Or even a very simple mistake. Instead, of, you mix the two language, official languages, English or French, in the Italian. You are not supposed to do that. You're supposed to reply all in English or all in French but no mix. So careful with that. Also, good moment to self-assessment in the sense that we should ask ourselves some questions regarding this competition and if we really want to go to it. Do we have the experience at the background? Are we really interested in, in apply to this? Oh, not only because of the waste of time, of if we are not in, really interested, but also because if we are really interested, it should be a source of motivation to dedicate more time, concentration, energy to fulfill the application. Simple as that. Contribution to the EU. In fact, this is one of the questions that will be in your application form. It's not bad to think about it, how you can contribute. Of course, we are not, uh, with all my respect, the president of the commission, Ursula von der Leyen. So our role will be smaller, but you never know. Maybe in the future, once you join the institutions, you will be assessing, you will be a counselor in agricultural topics to the president of the commission at that time. Maybe Ursula von der Leyen or any other. So who knows? You can have a very powerful position and very relevant <laughs> regarding the agriculture side or, or any other. Remember that once inside of the institutions, you can move through them. In what role could you best contribute? Well, agriculture is one area, but it's quite vast. There's so many aspects. So think about it. Think about your expertise, your knowledge, what you want to do. Think all about it, have it in mind. It's not a question of just never thinking about it, but just give it a thought one day or another. Keep it in your mind and strains. Also, you will have to fulfill this part in the application. Remember to outline two of your main achievements. That's a good moment to think about also, and it's related to the pre uh, to previous questions. So it's always good to review our CV or expertise and to see how we can sell it better through an application on paper or electronically on the screen, but also later on in the assessment, it will help us. Um, now focusing clearly on the field of expertise, think about your, how your CV yeah. adapts to the reality of the duties. Yeah. We saw the duties before, so please think about it. It's not a random paper, it's not random words. These words are matters. These are the guidelines, they are the keywords that should be in our CV and in our application. So those are the elements that the members of the board who will be assessing your application and your talent will be looking for. Will be looking for policy development, for working in agriculture, analysis, uh, for research, all these topics that we saw at the beginning. Um, also, it will be good to know how the work of the institution is done. Why? Because it will help you to give perspective to whatever, to not to yes, to your application, to your to your experience, to see that what there are clearly the elements that matter, and those where they don't matter at all, what they are relevant for the elements I have to put in my application, and the elements are not. So because now from now on, when you pass and you join the institution, you will be an officer, and you will be you will develop the work of an your officer. In the area of agriculture, yes, but it's equivalent to other areas in the institution. So it means that we have to, and that we need to put ourselves in that perspective to allow the members of the board to see that we are potential good candidates, to identify in us the, uh, the substrate, the um, 
the material, uh, the basic materials of a good officer of the European institutions. And also the skills and capacities. It's not bad to do a review and to self-assess ourselves about that. If not now, maybe, but later you will get the punctuation. And remember, I remind you that the assessment center will go through a process that includes evaluation of your knowledge in the field of expertise, agriculture, but also in your eight capacities to become an officer of the European institutions. So it's not bad when we are fulfilling the application to start with this self-analysis mm -hmm. and to get familiar with these elements. So this is the application. This is the classic example of how it is done. If you open your application, you will get this in the area of education and training. It's here where you are supposed to uh, write down your academic background, agricultural status, or the name uh, that it uh, has in your in your country. Remember, it should be a minimum of uh, three years uh, degree that you need to put here to get into the next step. Well, also to combine with your working experience. So careful with that. Be sure that you put your expertise. Oh, cannot be that I make a mistake or can, it cannot be that I, by any chance, forget to write down that I got a degree in agricultural studies. Well, it could happen as well. We have seen it. We have seen candidates who forgot to fulfill this part or just put another degree, but not the relevant degree for the competition. So please check it, check it twice. Remember to put all the elements here. You got a degree, you got a master, you put both of them. You go to PhD studies, studies. You put the master, the degree, the master, and the PhD studies. You put everything there, so they can really assess. They can see that okay, you got a university degree of at least three years, and more than enough. That's okay. We move to the next point, but please don't be overconfident on this part. I was so there. So. Uh, a few reminders, relevant ones. The CV is not the same as the talent screener. Please remember that whatever you put in the CV, in your CV part, in your application, it won't help you in the talent screener. The talent screener is assessed separately. They read differently. They don't read it at the same time. So please don't make the mistake of just when fulfilling the CV or fulfilling the talent screener, say, okay, I am fulfilling my CV, then please read my talent screener for full detail. Wrong, it won't help you. You will, uh, you, you risk to be expelled or not to be assessed. Uh, with the talent is the same. It will be the first time that the candidate say, okay, no, well, I put all the details on my CV and my application, so I don't, I won't repeat them here in my talent screener. No, wrong. They are not crossing data. They are just reading whatever is in front of them. So don't expect any effort. And also it's indicated in the notice of competition. So if it's there, it's a rule and you should follow the rules. Whatever you do, follow the rules, please. And so do your math. You need three years of relevant experience or six with a degree. So it means that if you don't fulfill this period of time, probably you will get caught and spelled from the competition. So you risk that. So try to justify all your years of experience. Also because maybe you've been working in, in a farm for 20 years, but you have a document later to prove it. You don't have any way of sustaining this experience. Well, that's a problem. EPSO will ask you for the papers. It will ask you later on later stages how to prove that you've been working there. It's not only a question because you say that. And remember also another aspect that if you are working part time, or if you are working in a profession that it was part agriculture, part other fields, you won't get the full the full expertise. I mean, I've been working three years in a film that we were dealing with agriculture topics, studies, and and space science. Let's say that. Then 
I was working 50% 50, 50 of my time for agriculture, 50% for space science. Well, the moment they assess you, they say, okay, three years, but only f uh, half time for the agriculture. So it means this like one year and a half of experience, not like three years. So take that into consideration. Perhaps you think that you have plenty of time or, or uh, plenty of working experience, <laughs> but perhaps at the end, it's not so long if they apply this kind of correction when reading your CV. Or also because it's not well explained what you did in your uh, professional career that they think that, okay, the candidate was working in these areas, but okay, part of these areas doesn't look like they are agriculture. So I will count only 50%, no, not full marks, not full time because I don't see it. So that's why it's the last point, be clear, explain. If the set, even if the name you think is absolutely self-explanatory, should be obvious, think twice. Usually for you, it's obvious because it's your CV, it's your working experience, but not for others, not for one, someone who doesn't know you. Someone who is reading from the scratch, is reading from nothing, your CV, your experience. Okay, will this person understand what you are doing? Or no. So please be clear, explain yourselves, write, provide input. The more clear it is your, your CV and your application, the better. So you need to check twice and you need to review it and to work on it. It's not a question of just fulfilling it in five minutes. So that's for the part of uh, and slip your reply. So that's up. I think that's obvious. That's it's common sense. But do we do it usually? Do we uh, work on during a long period of time or we just wait till the last moment to deliver our, our application? So try to avoid it, especially in an area of expertise like this one where it's quite clear and quite narrow the area of expertise that they're asking for. So we need to explain clearly how we match with this profile they seek. So now we continue with chasing that unicorn. We continue just chasing our fantasy or dreams about passing the talent screen and how we can do it, how we can get the magical answer that will allow us to get full marks for everything, from everything. Okay, so let's see. Well, this is extracted uh, literally from the notice of competition. I'm not inventing anything. This paragraph is like that. Only for those candidates deemed eligible, I described in point three, in refer to the uh, study, your yeah. university studies and your working experience, That's and using cool. solely the information provided in this talent screener section. Please keep keep it in mind. The information provided in this talent screener section. Don't think that they will read anything else. I repeat and I repeat and again uh, myself because that's a very, very common mistake. I mentioned before, yes, I'm insisting again. Yes, please, Inigo, shut up. You are talking too much on, on it. But the truth is it happens and it happens every time. So please be careful. So, and they even say it, even if already mentioned in other sense of your application form. In the past, it was a paragraph, a simple paragraph in the notice of competition. Already now, the, cap, the, the bold letters, the, the black letters, they are marked in the notice of competition. So even EPSO realize about that. So, yes. Yeah. Only for those candidates deemed eligible as described above in point three, using so, solely the information provided in the talent screen section. Uh, good reading. We put a lot of relevant information in the task and answers. Okay, so we continue. That's not the So, what to answer? What What do we need in, in our reply? Well, remember, focus on your professional experience, facts, not opinions. I mean, saying that I did a very good job is not a fact. It's your opinion. A fact would be to say that, okay, thanks to my performance in my duties, I promoted, I was promoted every two years to, until I ended as a director general of the firm. Whatever. That's a good testimony of that your job was apparently good. But saying that I did a good uh, job is not a fact. Be smart, choose just by examples. There is a limitation of a space to, to reply. There's a limitation uh, of capacity of information that you could put inside. So 
if you want to focus on one example, you need to, uh, you want to explain clearly something, this go for the most uh, comprehensive ones, for the best ones, best examples. Don't focus on the minor one that it proves nothing at the end. And again, sleep on your replies. Yes, I'm insisting a lot of in sleeping. Not because I'm a Spaniard and we love siesta, but just because it helps, it really helps. That's to write one day and the next day check and see if what you wrote is makes sense or it doesn't make sense. Uh, we know for some candidates that they follow this strategy. They, uh, it took them several days, even one week or even more to fulfill the application. But at the end, the point that we, they got in the talent um, through the CB, it pay off. They really got a very high score in the talent screener. So why do they have the best CV of all the candidates? As far as I know, no, they didn't. Being fully honest, but probably they did the best application. They did the best talent. So they could more points than those who are double experience, but they just spent a few minutes fulfilling the application. This, let on your replies and dedicate time. And also, try to see who is a good friend. I referred to that before, but I repeat it again. It's always good to have someone near you who can uh, read your application, who can read whatever you wrote, and to say, tell you, okay, it makes sense or it doesn't make sense at all, what you wrote here. Well, uh, sorry, can you close the micro? Otherwise, I will have to... Sorry, one moment. I think it's already done. Good. I don't like to do that, but still, sometimes we we require it. I'll open micros again later. Uh, so check for a friend. Can be a relative. Can be a husband, a uh, wife, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, uh, your cousin, your nephew. Whoever has a good command of the language, you have fulfilled the application and the talent screener. Ask that person to read it from scratch. Yes, okay, read this document. I, I'm not telling you the requirement, just simply read it and tell me, does it make sense or not? What can you see? Do you think that after reading this, you can see that I got 20 years of experience here? To be honest, no, I don't see what's your experience. Oh, well, it looks like, well, I, I knew for a couple of years, I know that you've been working in this sector for six years only, but it looks like you got 40 years of experience after reading this. Okay, that's a good, very good application then. When, when the results are multiplied somehow after the reading. And being always uh, close to the truth, uh, being always um, fulfilling it with the right information, with the right input. Please, I will never suggest to you to cheat or to say anything that is not right because at the end they will know, they will discover it. So please don't try or don't think about it. So let's move now. This is the typical example, the typical image of these questions. Well, we got first question. Have you taken a degree, blah, blah, blah. No, yes. Remember, if you write no directly, the question is canceled. So please don't say no and then fulfill the answer. If you have something to say, if you think that it's, something could be valid as an answer to this question, you put yes and you explain. But explain. It's not because you think it's obvious and it's plain visible that it will be done. No, you need to explain. Remember, someone who is reading your talent, that's, uh, this person doesn't have next to him or to her, your CV or anything. So they just are, they are just reading your talent and checking with a list of requirements. So if you fulfill those requirements, you get through, you get the marks. If you don't, sorry, next time. So careful with that. So that's just a visual reference. I hope you already have seen it and I hope you all of you already started to fulfill the talent and you know these questions. But still, I'll go now step by step through them to see what elements are they looking for and what uh, consideration are they trying to make with these questions, okay? What are the aspects they are clearly more interested here? Okay. So the first question is regarding the, um, the education. Here, please, if you have put in the CV part, in the previous part that you got a master, a PhD or whatever, doesn't matter. Now this is a new question, just think about it. And what matters is 
beyond the degree, beyond that degree, what else do you got? Do you got a master? Do you got a PhD? Do you got extra studies? Whatever. In principle, uh, uh, you need one year studies to, to put it here. So you got some other studies, write it down here. So don't commit the mistake to think, oh no, my studies are not good enough. Oh no, I cannot put that. Okay, what the hell, but you got a master in agricultural studies. Yes, why not? you're not putting this here? You are supposed to do that. Now, I'm putting clear the title of the study, the, the field of the studies, the duration of the studies. They need to see those uh, aspects. Otherwise, they can think the words. Uh, okay, you got a degree, and degree on what? I don't know. I, you, the candidate didn't wrote it down. Okay, out. I don't care. Zero points. On the contrary, you got the studies and you detail the subjects clearly in line with the elements and with the notions seek by this competition that are referred, as I said before, in the duties at the beginning of the notice of competition, but, uh, but also in the Annex 1. So if they are aligned with that, we write it down, we specify it, we, because they don't know. We follow our study in, 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 in engineering studies in agriculture, good, but okay, but uh, those studies can be quite wide open. They could contain different subjects, different training, different um, courses, depending on the place, on the country, on many, many things. So let's give some data, let's give some input. So they know that our studies really match with expertise and the area of knowledge that they are looking for. And also, well, don't forget to include all the inputs and all the elements that they are required in the question. So question two and three, I put them together because they are complementary. So they ask about developing policy and or legislation and implementing that policy and or legislation. Of course, if you have a previous experience in a public institution, it helps a lot because it's more evident. It's easier to, to see that. But not only, I mean, you can, you can have experience in a lobby, in a association of the sector. Doesn't mean that you are working in Brussels that automatically you get the expertise and the knowledge. Maybe you are working in, in your country, Spain, Italy, France, Germany, Bulgaria, we don't know, in, many, in any member state. And you were part of a, an association of the sector, you were promoting and you were talking to the public administration to develop new policies or to implement the policies that came from Brussels. Who knows? But you need to specify, you need to explain to me, when I say to me, to the assessor. Okay, how does it, uh, how did you do it? What was the content inside? So that's quite relevant. Please provide details. Sometimes uh, the candidates tend to just put the name and the dates and that's it. Okay, they will understand. No, they won't understand because they are reading application from a lot of candidates from different member states. So there is not an equivalent. There is not the same thing for one candidate who got a parkour professional from Ireland and France that the one who came from Poland and Romania. They have the names are different. The type of expertise is different, but at the end, in the instance, it's the same. But in the meantime, we need to explain, we need to show to the assessor that it's the same and we are valid professionals for this. Okay, so working groups, public consultations, all these activities could help you. Could be as assistance to demonstrate that you got experience in this area on developing policy and implementing policy or legislation. So digging in your CV to look for this kind of expertise and this kind of experiences. So for question, do you have professional experience in evaluating, monitoring and negotiating rural and development programs? Okay, here it's important that you provide detail about what kind of programs, the, the budget, the how did you do it at the stage that you participated that's why I'm saying at the end, don't estimate your experience. That's irrelevant, but display them. Now I participate in the evaluation of the feather. Okay. But feather usually is not related to agriculture, so I don't see the point. Well, I participate in the evaluation of a program and the feather funds, but it was clearly related to agriculture on this manner or through this task. So now, yes, it makes sense. 
but at the beginning with just a short reference, it doesn't make sense at all. But with a good explanation, it makes. Always this explanation align with the elements or with the consideration they are looking for in your in you candidates who are seeking these positions. And again, align with the description of the duties and with the annex one and annex two in the notice of competition. Those are the key words. Those are the key elements that should be reflected in your application. Uh, your experience should, be, should reflect this element in your application. To say it completely. Another question. Do you have professional experience in development and negotiation trade agreements or international standards? Okay, this uh, question I must admit again, those who have been working in public administration have an advantage. Of course, but not only. Many of you, you could have something. Why not? Look for it. So uh, again, provide context. Maybe you participate in a working group who provide uh, counsel to the Co International Committee of Agriculture. Let's see, something like that. Why not? I mean, it should come. I mean, dig in, in your experience, look for it. And don't worry if by any chance you don't have no experience at all in this area. Well, doesn't matter. You still have another seven questions to fulfill and to get points. The, uh, the passing mark won't be the maximum, the top. Probably will be half or even less. So don't get too much worried. Try to get the best of your experience. Okay, economic, socioeconomic and policy analysis in the area of agriculture. So look carefully to the Annex 1 duties, for instance. So they say before, so there is the definition of the elements. That's what they are looking for. There's no secret. There is no hidden trap here. No. Have I done any analysis, policy analysis? Yes. How? When? For what? Socioeconomic analysis? Whatever analysis, but analysis. Okay. That's important. That's relevant. I mean, you need to explain clearly. So, seventh question. Perform, um, monitoring market development, factor influence in the competitiveness of the EU agricultural sector. The nature of your work. Again, this is quite in line with the task and it's a quite a straightforward question. So we have done any kind of analysis. We need to detail this analysis. We need to explain clearly this analysis because maybe because of the name of the position, uh, that's, um, it's not reflected. For instance, no, in that company, I was uh, the responsible of agriculture. Okay, what does it mean responsible of agriculture? No, doing deep analysis of the agricultural markets. Oh, that's good. But if I then detail, the reader, the Assess the assessor, the member of the board who will be reading my talent will say, okay, I don't see it. You need to explain. You need to say, okay, you did the analysis. What did you analyze? How did you do it? I mean, there are small questions. I just summarize a small of them here, but they are in the in the application. They appear. It's not a secret. It's nothing, it's nothing that is not visible. Just read them carefully and try to reply to all of them to provide as much input as possible. Always, again, I'm insisting, it's the fifth, sixth time I repeat it, but anyway, I think uh, it deserves it. Align with the wording and with the elements seek in the notice of competition for this profile. They are not looking for, uh, they are not looking for people who is analyzing the stock market. No, they are looking for people who is analyzing the agricultural markets. So they are not looking for people who have been doing rocket science. No, they are looking for people who is doing agricultural science. So again, we need to explain, we need to show it. By the way, what I'm saying here is for agriculture. I'm focusing on that, but it's valid for any kind of talent. If it's a different competition with a different profile, okay, you will have to align your expertise and your professional background to the elements required in the notice of competition. That's it. But it's the same ideas. Because I'm using agriculture because here, this is the notice of competition that we have open now and alive, but I'm kicking. But any other competition is exactly the same ideas. Nothing changed. Take that in, into account. So, eight question. This is good for all of you who got a PhD or who have been doing purely research on, a, on the agriculture side. 
maybe some of you have already experienced in the GRC and you've been working on there for some agricultural projects. So all this that would be good. I mean, but remember to put all the information to, uh, to show that you've been doing real research. If it's through your PhD thesis or it's been do through articles in peer review journals, quite important to put the reference. Imagine that you got an article in the in nature, or in nature or in science. Okay, what the hell? That's a high impact. Tell. Or if it's another communication, maybe it's not a so well known journal, but it's the most relevant or the journal with highest impact in your sector, in agriculture, or in a specific area of agriculture, you mention it. Or if it's the, your article is the most referent article in the history of that topic, of that particular topic inside of the area of agriculture, you mention it. They won't look uh, for it into Google. They won't look, okay, this article was good by the candidate, let's see. No, because that would be, that would mean identifying the, 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 the candidate. That's not allowed, but you display that your article got X references, or it was published in a high impact magazine or journal. That's good. That's possible. So remember to explain all these details. Sometimes it, may, it means we think it's obvious. Sometimes we think that ah, they don't care. They are not interested. Hell, they are. They are really interested. They want to know. They want to see it. They want to read it. So please provide them with this input. Tell them. Don't omit it, don't be shy. So now it's time to sign, now to offer the best of you on a paper. And last question. Well, for those of you who perhaps by, by family issues, uh, well, uh, family development, or by any chance you've been working in a farm or an agricultural enterprise, why not to take advantage? Because also your perspective could be quite valuable. Could be quite useful to have someone who has been applying the law to the industry purely. It's not only from the theoretical side or from the administrative side, but also from the exploitation side. I mean, from the real end of the market, end of the line, that is the market, the, the farms. So why not to mention, of course, the bigger is the farm, Oh, the more different policies has touched the farm, the better. To say that through your experience in the exploitation of the farm, you have known more about the European funds, or you've been participating in other entities, or you've been doing whatever you have done there, please detail. But detail the elements that are relevant for the position. Without my respect, if you have been raising wheat or you've been cultivating sunflower seeds, perhaps it's not relevant if the funds and the policies apply are the same. But if it's relevant that you've been applying different, regula different regulation or you've been providing feedback on the application of different regulation into the fields in the farms, well, that could be useful, that could be interesting. So think about it, uh, give a all three, uh, 360 degrees tour to your experience to see how it's related to the position and to the elements. Your first thought usually is not the right one in the sense that you say, oh, no, 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 they don't care about that experience. So probably my experience in working in that company doesn't matter. Really? Think twice, check, try. Just the, the parting point should be, okay, how can my experience be of help for this talent. How can I reflect that my professional experience can, is useful and it matches the profile sick in this competition? That's the question. How can we do it? Don't think, no, no, it can be. Don't think in negative, think in positive. I can do it. I have the experience. Okay, now how can I describe it better? Or how can I sell correctly that I really have a profile that matches what they are looking for? That's the question that we should have in mind. And that is the, uh, the answer to the question that we are supposed to reflect in our application. Simple, relatively. So almost there. So we are getting into the solution. We are getting to, into the unicorn, as I mentioned before. So let's see what else can we propose from just some Europeans to help you to fulfill the, uh, the application and to get a talent screener with the highest marks 
And so you will be invited into the assessment. I just reminded you that once you are into the assessment, the marks of your talent screener, they don't count. But in the meantime, we need the highest to get into the assessment. And here, please remember what uh, Albert Einstein said, genius is making complex ideas simple, not making simple ideas complex. So don't think about giving too much detail about the position. You will get more if it doesn't catch the essence of what you did. And sometimes a very short sentence um, explains much more than very baroque and complicated sentences. And when saying that, I'm looking especially to, as myself, people from Latin origin, especially Spaniards, who have the tendency to make very complicated sentences putting a lot of words, more than 20 words in one sentence, and with, uh, with subordinates. With a lot of, okay, the subject is here, but in the meantime, I put another sentence, and then another sentence, and then another sentence, and then I put the end of the sentence, so you got lost of what I was trying to say right at the beginning. No, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be like that. So you should keep it short. Uh, they say the key rule, keep it short and simple. Explain things clearly in one sentence. One sentence, ten. You got three three ideas to explain, three items, three inputs about your working experience. Okay, three sentences. You don't need to put all in one sentence. You still got enough digits, four four thousand characters to explain. So don't worry about that. With a simple sentence, you can say more than with a very complex one. And also because this philosophy, this idea, it's what is followed by EPSO. They think that's a, a good professional, someone who knows well about his or her field of expertise is capable of explaining something in a very simple manner. Even the most complicated issue, they can explain it simply. And on the contrary, if you are not a real expert on your area, if you are not a person who knows well the topic of expertise, you won't be able to do that. You will need hours and hours to explain something because you don't know how to explain it better. You lack that expertise, you lack that knowledge. So that's why this is important, keep it in mind. So you want to prove that you are a very good professional, that you are a, a good one in the area of agriculture. Just make things simple, explain it clearly. Don't overcomplicate yourselves, as simple as that. Then, some tips. Let's go to the tips I mentioned before. Please don't write long sentences. I insisted, and I insist again. Every sentence length should be 10, 12 a word maximum length. Shouldn't be more than, than uh, 25. So if you wrote a sentence with more than 25 words, well, probably it will be a rather complicated sentence and, and any reader will get lost in the middle of it. Now, Word uh, Office includes one capacity that tells you when the, the phrase is too long and is too overcomplicated. And also there are some apps that help you with that. So maybe it could help you when you are drafting your text to use this kind of assistance to avoid any kind of disaster of words and words and words, a mountain of words without a real meaning of the, not with a real meaning, but with a visible meaning for the reader. So limit yourself to one main idea or input per sentence. Then clarity will come out from it. Sometimes you will need to use bullet points. I mean, they're not forbidden and they provide clarity. Depends on what you are listing and what you are trying to say. These are the right uh, element to be used. Big block of text. I mean, this is not one of the tests of the assessment. This is not the case study. This is a, a document that should be self-explanatory and help the assessors, the members of the board to understand that you are the right person to be chosen, that you, you match the requirements and your expertise and your knowledge match whatever they're looking for, for an officer in the agriculture domain. So that's why bullet points could help, provided they are not one single word, but a an idea well explained or a concept that is clear enough. Careful with omitting relevant information. Don't do that. Um, be smart. I mean, if you need to put several sentences in one block and one of this one of the elements 
that you want to introduce is very, very important. It's the most important one. Don't put it right in the middle. Just put it at the beginning or at the end, because usually the human nature uh, forces us to read more attentively the beginning and the end of the text. In the middle, sometimes we, we have tendency to skip it, even if we didn't want to, but imagine that you are an assessor, you are reading the talents and You've been in the morning reading almost nearly 20 different talent screeners, 20 different candidates. So you are tired, you are not paying attention. So you will read the first sentence and the last one. And in the middle, just keep it just because you are tired. So be careful with that. We put the key idea, the key element that we want absolutely them to read it. We put it at the beginning, at the end. Um, don't make your best ideas or your best elements get lost in the middle. So, and be careful because these are things that it's beautiful what I'm telling now. Okay, it's so useful, whatever you told me. Well, thank you a lot. Well, then I'll leave it for another day to write it down. No, you need to write, you need to read and rewrite and read and rewrite and read and rewrite. This is a cycle. It's not uh, done in once. You need several times to get it perfect. So it's not what I say that with real practice that one gets better. Not just by having in your mind all the elements that you want to include, that it will come out in a perfect shape. No, review it. I said before, sleep on it. So remember that's, uh, that's the indication. Uh, or another element, don't use jargon. If you need it, explain it. Why? Because, well, you, for those of you who are already working in the institutions, you have you have seen it. We use a lot of acronyms. We use a lot of specific words that in our office, it has full meaning. Outside of our office, if we try to tell those words to our family and friends, they will look at us and say, what the hell are you talking about? What language are you using? So that's the same. If we are using a kind of specific jargon, we don't know if the person in front of us or the reader of your talent will know about this jargon. We don't know if they under, fully understand what we want to say when we're using not standard words. That's why we need to use standard words. Imagine that this is a very long name that you just use the acronym. Well, you put it at the beginning, right at the beginning. This acronym means this. Just to save time and space, you use the acronym later. But at the beginning, you explain it. Well, that's perfectly fine try to avoid it as much as possible. Only when there's no other option, use it. So be very careful with the jargon because also the danger of the jargon is that it's perfectly natural to us. We say, okay, no, well, this uh, the gibberish is perfectly, makes sense for me. Yes, but maybe not for me. And I'm the person who has to give some points to whatever you wrote here. So it doesn't make sense, you get nothing, sorry. So we use standard words, standard language, much better. Again, I said before about the uh, the idea of using a friend, family, or relative to check or replies to check our application. Again, I insist on this. This is uh, needed. I mean, if we want to guarantee that our application is perfect, or the closest is possible to perfect, we need someone else because they will see differently. They, will, they won't be in our mind or in our shoes. They will be in their own shoes, their own mind. And therefore, they will be closer to the real scenario, to the real role of the assessor who is just reading a paper, who doesn't know anything else about us, about our career or, or a curriculum. Okay. Seventh tip. Be careful with false friends. This is clear, uh, clearly related to, to the jargon as well. And especially for those who are not native in English. Well, nowadays uh, only Aries are more or less native and people from Malt. But for all others, we are using French or we are using English. And sometimes we have tendency to use some words that maybe they don't, they don't mean whatever we think they mean. So sometimes it's not a big deal. Sometimes it's understandable. Okay, but better if we avoid this kind of risk, if we check that the words that we are using mean whatever we want they to mean. So careful with that. And uh, last tip, but on the last, use available resources. I said before, I mean, you have to notice a competition. The keywords, 
there's no um, they are not secret they are on the notice of competition check the duties check the annex one and the annex two what kind of words they're using what kind of sentence what kind of approach they're following and it's the same approach i should follow this the same notions the same ideas i should reflect in my application based on my career based on my experience based on the elements i can provide so that's the first thing. Second, as I say, use the tools that allow you to write better, to check if your sentence is too complicated, or whatever any other tool and resource that you may think that is available to draft a good CV and to draft a good talent screener. And I said before, I say it now, and I will say later. Real practice is the only way one, how one gets better. If some of you already have participated in some competitions in another com specialist competition maybe you have gone through a talent and you have uh, having got the points that you were expecting or the score that you thought that you deserved it okay could happen that the assessor the board they were evil people and they gave you very low marks could happen it's a possibility but most likely it's because you made some mistakes. It's because something you didn't explain correctly. It's because something was not clear or something was omitted when you thought that it was perfectly clear. So that should be lessons learned that we should apply now in this competition. If we have, the, if we got the profile, we match the element that they are looking for. Now it's time to use all our knowledge accumulated, all our experience in previous competitions to use it here. And if you are new, just a simple question of work hard in writing, drafting, reviewing, drafting again, reviewing, getting the help from a colleague, family, friends, whoever, to check, okay, do you understand the sentence? I know sometimes it's, it can be painful, then we don't want to hear bad comments about whatever we have wrote, or after spending too much time uh, drafting a paragraph, we say, okay, well, it's perfect. Someone say, no, it's not perfect. You made some typos here and here and here. The sentence I cannot understand. And this is a full friend because it doesn't mean whatever you think it means. And it, it pain, uh, it hurts, of course. Sometimes uh, we are proud people and say, come on, it can be. Well, it's better that it happens now. We learn our lessons. Only our friend, this person will know and yes, It's better that, that the board the assessor, when they're reading our CV, when they are reading our talent, they will discover, okay, there is a typo here, here, here. This is a false fan. It doesn't mean whatever the candidate thought it meant. And this sentence is not right. Then we are doomed. We are out of the competition. We are losing points. It's not the moment to make those stupid mistakes. Okay, sometimes it's better just despite come hard a little bit to do the effort for once and for good. I re remind you, we saw it at the beginning with a good talent, with a uh, good application, our chances of getting into the assessment are quite high. Uh, and it depends only on whatever we're writing here now. No C CVT, no, assess no previous assessment, no simple, your talent and your application. It's what you need to get into the assessment. So think about it. Does it deserve a little effort? I think so. So that's the conclusion of today. There are no unicorns and there are not a single magical solution to our application. No, there is through work that they will get it. There will be through our own analysis of the notice of competition, extracting the words, the keywords that appear in the duties and in the task and the profiles uh, so that will get it and will reflect it when we are talking about our experience. So no magic, just practical work. Only to work matters. That's it. That's it, nothing else, nothing more. Takes time, takes effort, yes. But I think it deserves it again. I said it before and I will repeat it again, please. Um, that's regarding the talent. If anyone wants our help for something else, I can mention uh, to finalize my, my presentation that from the YSMO Super side, we organize CBT trainings, training for the assessment, coaching, and casino, I mean cast. So, but anyway, 
So that's it from my side today now. Now maybe it's time for you to see your, your questions and to start replying. So I will take out the, the presentation and I'll start replying. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. So let me go through the question right from the beginning. Hello, hello, hello. Two questions from Angelo. My opinion on the CBT test is sometimes by writing languages other than English and French. Do you suggest to choose the first language in English? It's up to you. So far, I was expertise with the, with the CBT is that um, in the main languages, when I say my language, English, French, but also German, Spanish, Italian, usually the uh, translation for the, of the exercise has improved in the last year or so. It doesn't matter so much, I would say. But if you're proficiency and you think that you can do the CBT part in English and do the assessment in French, to you, I remind you that the language too, it can be only English or French. So careful with that. If you are trilingual, let's say, well, it's a strategy you can follow. Are working experiences below one more relevant to you? Mm, it could be, it could be, you, you need to explain it. The only thing is one month and they're asking for three years. So it means three years, thir 36 months. So it's very short time period. So you need 35 experiences more like that. In such case, I will try to, I wouldn't say accumulate, but add the app create a single experience saying, okay, I've been working as a teacher, uh, let's say, as a assistant teacher in agriculture oriented high school for three years. I mean, it's not a lie that you've been working like that, perhaps in different schools, but at the end, the tasks were the same, the type of work, oh, yes, so you just describe that because fulfilling 35 different times, exactly the same information is a bit of a nonsense. So let's be smart, uh, use common sense. Um, how to structure the text replies for its experience. As I said before, in, you need to follow the structure provided by EPSO. It's, it's clear. Think about a person who is tired, who has been reading a lot of documents for the whole day, and now gets your document. If that person can't read it, can understand whatever is right, uh, is right in there, uh, that's a clear structure. But if you provide, particularly in thinking about a big block of text, where you need to do a big effort, you need to um, sacrifice your energy to understand what is right in there, well, you are missing opportunities. I think that people uh, that will do their best, but they're human beings, they're not machines. So sometimes they commit mistakes. Be careful with that and try always to provide some clear structure. And there is not one single way, it's simple, the text the, at the end, the real test is when someone read it and understand it. it means a clear structure. If someone reads that they that person doesn't understand it, it's not a good structure. Uh, the CBT test, if I remember correctly from the notes of competition, can be on language one. So in, a, in any of the 24 official languages of the European Union. Uh, then how many time you used to take a selection process like this until it ends? Well, the thing is that, and that's why I didn't introduce in this presentation, the concept of for how long can we expect this competition? The present circumstances with the COVID-19 uh, makes a special situation that causes that there are big delays in some of the exams and some in some of the competition. That's why on ordinary circumstances, we could expect this process will take one year, one year, a few months, more or less. With COVID, could could be even two years. We will see. The thing is that now, the moment the deadline expires for fulfilling the the application, they will decide depending on the amount of candidates who fulfill the application if they go for the CVT or if they go directly to the assessment of the curriculum, to the evaluation of the curriculum. 
I guess that with 55 spots, if you are more than than 1,000, you will go to the CVT. But if you are less than 1,000, let's say 800 uh, or 700, could be that you go directly to the CV part, to the assessment of, this, uh, of the curriculum. Then after the assessment of the curriculum, you go to the uh, talent screener part and after the talent you go to the assessment and in the assessment you will take the CVT. In the case of taking the assessment in the assessment the CVT, I remind you that usually it's quite easy. The level of difficulty gets lower. Uh, it's already the final stage so there are not so many candidates. So it's not on the aim of EPSO of making people fail because of the CVT just when they are already in the last stage. So that's something that to make some reassurance to you. Regarding the uh, questions to fulfill uh, of the talent screener, how are enough? As many as you can. I know candidates who fulfill half of them, but they did a great job and the experience matched these four questions or five questions, but not the others. And they got full marks in those questions. So they get through other candidates who thought that they have plenty of experience. They replied to all the questions and they didn't get into the next stage. So as many as you can and do your best. Of course, if you can only reply two or three, I would say that's risky. I mean, um, considering that there are nine questions, well, I would say at least half of the questions you should be able to, to reply to them to be more or less confident of your chances of getting through. Next question. It's recommendable to mention that your experience comes from a trainship. Uh, yes, why not? I mean, uh, according to the EPSO rules, the of the uh, trainship that has been paid uh, is acceptable, so you can use it. But above all, what is important that if it's been a trainship, you should have some papers, some documents to prove later on that you got that experience that has been counted. So don't forget that you need papers to prove whatever experience you use in your CV or you put in your CV. So, um, it's always tricky with the people who has been working uh, illegally somehow, who have been working in a job that was not officially uh, reflected on a contract or in the social security. So it's uh, an issue because it's not accepted by EPSO. You need a salary, you need an official contract or official documents that prove that you've been working in the areas or in the companies you have said you've been. How long does it take to have the results of the talent screener? Well, that depends if you, how many people go to the talent. Usually, Usually for, um, let's say for three, 400 candidates in the talent, I would say a couple of months. Now with the COVID, sometimes it can take longer. It can take three, four months, that depends. You know, work uh, time uh, is not the same online and remote that in the office. So, but in any case, uh, every, any time EPSO is moving to the next stage, of the competition, they will let you know through your candidate profile. Remember to trust only official communication from EPSO, the one, the communication that you get in your candidate profile. Please don't trust other sources like social media or oh, one friend who told me from a friend, from a friend that a friend told him that. No, don't trust that. Trust only official communication from EPSO. That's very important. Otherwise, people tend to get crazy ideas about the competitions and how is it going on. Um, okay, I would like to ask you what is the mobility between positions once you are recruited? As far as I know, there is the option to move to new position after around two years. Yes, this is a no writing rule inside the institutions that you can move after two years from one position to another. Usually it takes longer. People tend to stay a bit longer, let's say three, four years before moving to another position if they want to. Other people stay in the same position for years and years and become real experts uh, in the area. It's up to you. You, have, you got the opportunity and you as an officer inside the institutions, 
you will have to decide what do you prefer and what do you want. If you want, imagine that you already are an officer in the area of agriculture, if you want to stay there, or if you want to move, move somewhere else inside the institutions. The CVT will come before or after the eligibility. As I say before, it will depend on the amount of candidates. As my bet, it's a personal bet based on other competitions, but it's up to the president of the of the board of assessors who will decide the exact amount of candidates needed to go to the CVT or to stay in the assessment of the CV and the talent with five, uh, 55 uh, vacancies. My opinion is that if you are more than 900, nearly 1000 candidates at the beginning, probably you will go to the CVT. But if you are less than those amounts, let's say 800 or even less, you will go directly to the part of the assessment of the CV and the talent screener and the CVT will be done during the assessment center. That's my personal bet based on the information that we got from previous competitions. But again, it's the president of the board at in your competition who will take the final decision. Um, yes, Elisa, I'll send information about our preparation courses by email. After this, this session, I will send you the, the link to the video and I will send you some information about our trainings and, and how we can help you. How, we can try to help you. Uh, Martin, say thank you very much. Well, my pleasure. I don't know if you have more questions. I saw some hand raised before. I don't know if I missed that, that question or not. Please let me know. You can open micro now if you want. Inigo. Yes. Hi, thank you so much for the presentation. I just have a doubt because I, I read the notice of competition and for me it was pretty clear that the CVT uh, will take place. The doubt is when, at the beginning? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it will take place. Ah, okay. It will take okay. place for sure. Okay. It's uh, as far as I remember, I recall, it's compulsory in all the competitions. But the only thing that, as I say, if you are a lot candidates, you will do the, or you will take the CVT first step. If you are not so many, my estimation around 800 or less, you will go directly to the CV and the talent, mm -hmm. and then the CVT will be done during the assessment. That's it. The good thing, if you do the CVT during the assessment, usually the difficulty of the CVT, it's much lower. Yeah. And then, if I remember well, in the slide you presented on the Sante competition of 2018, there were like 400 something candidates. I mean, uh, I think it's much broader that profile than the agri one. So we should expect less candidates than that. Yeah, you never know. We don't have a crystal ball. But... Yeah, we will see because, uh, well, agriculture is a sector that is present in all the member states mm, to a certain extent. So in principle, yes, it's quite a specific. So we may think that there are not so many potential candidates for this competition, but we don't know because just think about the yeah. size of the agriculture sector in France, in Spain, in Italy, Greece. There are plenty of people who could match this profile. So mm. we will see. I mean, until there, it's true also that uh, one statistical thing that happened that not all the candidates who begin the application, even double amount of candidates, they begin the application at the end, they finish it and they present it officially. There are so many mm -hmm. candidates who start to just write it down and at the end they, they leave it, abandon, they abandon it. So who knows, maybe 3,000 will begin and only 600 will be real candidates at the end. Until the beginning of March, if I remember correctly, we won't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. My pleasure. Any other question or comment? Uh, the question, do you think it's better to do the CVT training that just some of off early or after a few weeks after the deadline ends? Personally, I would think earlier, 
because we don't know when the CVT will be, will be. If you wait after, could happen that the, the the COVID crisis is over and the CVTs can take place in no time. So you have a few weeks or days to practice and to get familiar with the CVT, if it's especially something that you are not previously familiar with. On the contrary, if you give yourself more time, you can have the opportunity to interiorize, to, to adapt to the methodology. And then after that, something like it's like riding a bicycle. It's with you. Next, uh, if, even if it takes time, it will still be there and you will be capable of keeping uh, getting to shape in no time. That's why we, will, so we prefer to, to advise to do earlier than later. Uh, because pressure, nervous, uh, to be in a hurry is not a good thing to practice the CBT or anything in the EPSO side. My pleasure. More questions, more comments. Okay, I think that's it for today. Anyway, you can contact us through social media, through our email, just semos europeos at gmail.com. Uh, we'll do our best to reply to you with the best knowledge and wisdom and to help to you. Okay, so see you there. Bye. Bye. Bye.